Hello class, this video is about using the fundamental identities of trigonometry. What we're going to do, and I'm going to split this up into parts, all we're going to do is understand what are these fundamental trig identities, and also how to verify different equations based upon uh, essentially these two identities right here, the reciprocal or three, the reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, and the Pythagorean identities. And between these uh, three types of identities, we could verify or prove an equation is true or not. Okay? These six you should already know. Okay? And it might be written a little bit differently for you, but you know that cosecant, I'll start down here, is the flip of sine. You know that secant is the flip of cosine. You know that cotangent is the flip of tangent. If you know that is true, you know the reverse is true, like sine is the flip of cosecant, cosine is the flip of secant, tangent is the flip of cotangent. So these six you should feel comfortable or have heard these before. These you've heard before, but you may have forgotten. You know that tangent is sine over cosine. And if cotangent is the flip, you also know that cotangent is cosine over sine. So for tangent and cotangent, there's actually two identities you need to know. Tangent is the same thing as, you know, one over cotangent. It also means sine over cosine. Cotangent is tangent flipped, and also means cosine over sine. So those two actually have two identities you need to know. The next three you need to know, they're called the Pythagorean identities. And not only need to know them, but you also need to know how are they, um, how are they proven, or how can you uh, solve for them. The only one I remember, that I always remember every year, and the one that we practice so far, is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And we did a bunch of that in the quizzes that you did before. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. These two you may not remember very well, or you might get confused, or like myself, I don't remember them after a while. What you need to know, or one of the standards for California, is you need to know how to solve these, or get to these, based upon our Pythagorean identity. So they call it the Pythagorean identity, remember like in the unit circle we did a triangle, um, one leg is sine, so that squared plus cosine squared equals one squared. So this one you should prove, or you should, you should know by heart already. Okay? How can we use that to solve these? So this is... Um, not so bad. So you always start off with this one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So what I'm going to do is let's pretend I'm going to divide everything in this problem. Let's just say let's divide everything by um, let's divide everything by sine. Okay. So and just to make it simple I'll just do s. So I'll divide everything by sine squared. Okay. Which is legal as long as I do if I do something to an equation and do it to everything, it's legal. Would you agree with me that sine squared over sine squared is 1? Okay. As we said above, cosine squared over sine squared is the same thing as tangent flipped, or this is the same thing as cotangent squared. And 1 over sine squared, this is the identity you need to know. What is sine squared, or what is sine flipped? It's cosecant. And since this is squared, it's cosecant squared. So you may have noticed, because of dividing everything by sine squared, which is legal, I solved or proved, and you should know how to do this too, derived this third Pythagorean identity. Okay? I think some of you will know how to find the second identity. So you saw how I divided everything by sine squared. What if instead I divided everything by cosine squared? So cosine squared, cosine squared, cosine squared. All right. Sine squared over cosine squared, you should know, is tangent squared. Okay, so far. Cosine squared over cosine squared, you know, is 1. Right? Anything divided by itself, it's 1. And then 1 over cosine squared, remember 1 over cosine is secant. Or cosine flipped is secant. And then since it's squared, this one's going to be squared. And now I just derive the second Pythagorean identity. Again, what you, should, you need to know is you need to know how... And you need to memorize this one, and then figure out and derive the other two identities. You can also memorize the identities. I mean, for me, uh, I've never memorized it. It's hard for me to memorize. Maybe it's easier for you to memorize, but I always just derive it by dividing everything by sine or dividing everything by cosine. Um, there's the co-function identities. There are these even-odd identities, but we're not going to get through that today. Or we're not going to study that. We're not going to study one topic with this example one. It's called verifying a trig identity. So one of the things that you need to know, or one of the things that you need to solve, is I'm going to give you an equation, and given that equation, what you need to do is uh, prove that it's true. So here i got sine over 1 plus cosine, i got cosine over sine, um, equals cosecant. Okay. Step 1, okay, and this is going to be on your quiz, so make sure you remember this. Step 1 for solving or verifying a trig identity is to convert everything into sines and cosines. And by doing so, uh, you 
essentially put everything in one, I guess everything in the same format. So instead of using different letters and trig functions, let's just convert everything to sines and cosines. You notice that this is already in sines and cosines, you this is already in sines and cosines, but this one isn't. How can I convert cosecant into sines and cosines? Well, cosecant, remember, is 1 over sine flipped. So on this side, I'm going to call this 1 over sine. And these thetas, I always, because I write a lot, I don't put the thetas, but I'll, I'll put it at the end or I'll put it in the solution. So if you see these thetas missing or where did they go, just for simplicity's sake and to make it neater, I just get rid of the thetas and just put it back into the answer. So my goal is to get this to look like 1 over sine. How do I do that? First, the second step, you'll notice if there is a fraction, I need to combine it. So I have a fraction here, one, I have a fraction here, two. How can I combine two fractions, okay? Or in algebra one, how was I able to combine two fractions? Well, I need to have a common denominator. So what I'm gonna do to get a common denominator, if you remember, I'm gonna multiply this fraction by sine, okay? Because I wanna get this denominator to be one plus cosine times sine. And this one up here, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 plus cosine. Because in doing so, I'm going to get a similar denominator. So multiplying top and bottom by 1 plus cosine. Now, this one over here will now become sine squared. And this is just a good habit. I'm not going to multiply the sine unless I have to. So I'm just going to leave this S1 plus cosine. And that's another habit that I have. Um, sometimes I just put S and C. You could do that too. I know I, you know, I'll just make this sine. So if I multiply sine top and bottom, this becomes sine squared, right? Sine times sine. And the bottom is going to leave alone. This fraction, um, when I multiply it out, I'm going to get cosine plus cosine squared, right? What if I distribute this cosine times 1, I get cosine. Cosine times cosine, I get cosine squared. So cos plus cos squared. And then the bottom again, I get sine 1 plus cosine. So again, it's just a good habit. And you'll do this in calculus also. Is I'm not going to multiply denominators unless I really have to. Now, do you see I have a common denominator? Right? I have a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the fraction. So instead of having two separate fractions, I could call this one whole fraction. So this one I'm going to call sine 1 plus cosine. Oops. Now on the top, I'm going to combine all the terms. I have sine squared, I have cosine, I have cosine squared. So I can't combine anything, so I'm just going to call this sine squared plus cos plus cos squared. Okay, does it look like the right side? No, it doesn't look like the right side at all. So I can't, I'm not done. I need to make it look like 1 over sine. Now I'm going to use my identities. Step number 3. So step number 1, I convert it to sines and cosines. Step 2, I combine the fractions. Step 3 is I'm going to use my identities to try to cancel out or convert stuff to make it look like the other side. The very first thing I notice is do you see how I have a sine squared and a cosine squared? So you may remember that sine squared plus cosine squared, the main trig identity, is equal to 1. So I will call that 1 plus cosine. So in case you are confused, what I did, oops, what I did or what I noticed is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So I turn this and this into one, and then it's plus cosine. Now I notice that seeing the numerator of a one plus cosine and seeing the denominator of a one plus cosine. So if I have a matching one on top and the bottom, this can cancel out with this. So that whole thing now becomes one over sine which, remember, what we want it to look like. So what I do is I connect these two and I draw arrows connecting them both. And then I do a check mark to prove that this left side, this messy, fraction-y, bunch of sines and cosines is just the same thing as cosecant. Now for you, you're probably wondering that doesn't make sense or what's the point. Um, when you get to calculus or if you, you know, some of you adventure into be a math, physics, or science major, you need to be very strong in uh, math skills or, or trig skills, sometimes you'll get something like this and you need to be able to simplify it to something nice and neat like this. So that was a very short video, what I'm going to have you do in class. 
is practice some of these trig identities. This is probably the easiest one, but you need to get comfortable with verifying and proving a trig identity. So that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching.